Welcome. This is a series on a game I'm developing called Juniper. Juniper is heavily inspired by other 2D sandboxes, mainly Terraria, which I have a normal amount of time in. Right now the game is in a very early stage of development. I plan to make more of these short form devlog like videos to show how the game progresses in the future. Consider sticking around if you would like to see more. Storing a large world full of tiles would take up a lot of memory, right? Luckily we don't actually have to store so much data in each tile. Originally, each tile was stored as a long, where I would use the first 16 bits of the long to store the tile ID, the second 16 bits to store the wall ID, and so on and so forth. Then I just realized I could use a struct, and not have to do a bunch of weird like bitwise operations. So each tile in the world stores an ID. That ID links back to a large array that basically has one instance of each tile. This array stores things like functions, the tile's names, how much health it has when getting mined, etc. I use a similar approach for items and projectiles. A game like this, you gotta render a lot of tiles, right? So how do we do that? Let's start off with doing some math. Our tiles are 8x8 pixels. If we assume a 1080p screen, all we have to do is divide the resolution by 8. Then we half it because the screen is actually made up of 2x2 two two pixel blocks for each pixel. We times those together and we get over 8,000 tiles. So like, no way are we going to render that all in a frame. So we don't. First up, we only worry about re-rendering the tiles when the camera actually moves. When it does, we just take the old rendered tiles and shift it in the opposite direction the camera moved. Now, we only need to render the new tiles that are on screen at the edge. So I want this game to be kind of bullet helly, at least in some parts. So making sure the projectiles are optimized well is very important. I use object pooling and have a large array of blank projectiles. Elsewhere, I defined the actual projectiles, and these are in charge of setting the values on the blanks and updating them. As you can see in the footage, there are quite a lot of projectiles, and we're still running at 60 FPS. In this footage, the projectiles around the player are red. After a projectile moves, it updates where it is in an invisible grid, and this can be used later when checking collisions with players and enemies. I've been working on biome detection, so let's go over how I've been doing that. Currently, I'm looping through a bunch of tiles around the player. Then I take the ID of the tile and add it to a dictionary that keeps track of how many tiles are around the player. This dictionary is then passed to all the biomes, and they use it to check if the player is in the biome. For example, here's an early version of a biome called the Salt Wastes. The Salt Waste checks for over 500 salt tiles to be nearby. You can see this requirement is met as the background changes. Some biomes won't use this tile lookup. For example, the Caves biome just checks if the player is below a certain point of the world. I've been working on adding a day and night cycle to my 2D sandbox game. The world basically just stores a timer that is increased once every frame. Once that timer has hit the full length of a day, I modulo it so it goes back to zero. I then use this code, as well as a lookup sprite I made, to determine what color the screen overlay should be. Then, calculating the value of the color, I use that to determine the transparency of the overlay. I also interpolate between the previous sun color and the current one to make the effect smoother. So Juniper is part of a series with one other game called Greenhouse. The only other game I released in the series is called Schism. And while this is in the same universe as Schism, it's not a direct sequel or prequel to anything. In this world, magic is taken from plants and various flora, so that means if you're in an area like a forest, it'll be pretty dense with magic. The actual use of magic varies differently between the five main covens of the world. These covens are Petal, Willow, Hypha, Umble, and Syme, or Kime or whatever. I'll probably make videos about each coven in the future, but that'll come when I actually implement their unique gameplay into the game. I plan to make all the music for Juniper. In fact, the music you've been hearing in the backgrounds of these shorts is music that I've made. I make all my music in FL Studio, and I'm going to play a few draft versions of a few tracks that might be in the game. If you want to check out more music afterwards, I post non-game related music on a channel called Clam Shandy, which can also be found on Spotify.
I've been working on... Dying. As the game progresses and I start working on actual content, the player's gonna need to die to it. I've went and added fall damage. It's basically just a timer that ticks up the longer you're falling down, and if it's above a certain threshold, you get hurt. And of course, I've made it so enemies can hurt you. Oh, and you can blow yourself up. As one of the playable covens is going to focus a lot on debuffing and buffing, I thought it was finally time I added status effects. Each status effect is assigned an ID. This ID is then used to get an index that's stored in the player or NPCs of how much time is left on that status. I loop through all the statuses, and if their timer is more than zero, I update it. The effects have different blocks of code depending if it's applied to an NPC or a player. The footage in the background shows a basic burn effect, but I planned for there to be plenty of more status effects. Something I haven't really mentioned in the devlogs yet is... We got multiplayer! So the way this is set up is the server is pretty much in charge of everything except the other player's inputs. I'll probably go into more depth in other devlogs of how individual parts are synced up, but for now, it's working. Developing multiplayer stuff can be really buggy, so hopefully I'm avoiding that so far. But I guess we'll see. One of the covens is going to focus primarily on familiars or minions as their form of attack. So you know, I should probably add them in. Each player has an array that stores how many of a familiar has spawned. This array is then looped through and counted to see if they have the capacity to spawn another familiar. Each familiar knows which player spawned them as well as the order in which they were spawned. This is used to make sure they're not all overlapping when they're following the player. I hope to show off some more specific familiars soon. I needed a low resolution font, mainly to display the player's item count for their inventory items, but having this font will also help in just random cases later in development. So after looking around for a while, I decided, eh, I'll just make it. Now while I mostly needed the font for numbers, I still wanted to have the standard English character set in case I needed to use it for other stuff. Now as you can imagine, making a font in such a low resolution, some characters are a bit of a struggle. I'm still not a fan of how the M and the W came out. Like what do you do in a free pixel space for them? I, I don't know. So here's the final product, in game, used to display item count numbers. I plan to make a larger font in future for more regular needs. I've been working on a little editor for various structures that will appear in Juniper. The main idea is I'll save any structures I make, and then during world generation I'll load them from a file and place them into the world. Right now the editor is pretty rinky dink, but it's probably going to be something I'm constantly working on during development. Eventually I want to be able to mark connection points so I can connect multiple structures together to allow for large procedurally generated structures made out of a bunch of small ones. Though I probably won't end up working on that for a while. I decided to start working on some enemy stuff. I knew I wanted like a standalone plant that didn't really move, and you know, I like purple. So I basically just started sketching out a shape I liked and then started adding shading and various stuff as I went along. As I knew the enemy wasn't going to be moving, I wanted to have some sort of projectile it could shoot, so I started working on that. I then implemented it into Juniper. So here it is. Later on I want to add some sort of squash and stretch to it to indicate when it's about to shoot, but right now it just shoots three petals on a timer. And then, as always, I had to spawn a bunch of them and see how the game fared. It held up pretty well. So if you're playing as the Petal Coven, you're going to have an innate double jump when you start off, so I've been working on adding in a double jumping system. Now that's slightly more complicated than it sounds, because I want there to be multiple double jumps for various items or equipables to give you. So basically, the player has an array of true and false for which double jumps they can use. These balls are then checked, and then if that's true, then the player does the double jump. Any item that wants to add a double jump simply needs to set that ball to true when the player is on the ground. Each double jump has a marked priority as well to decide which order they are used in. 